Okay. Hi. <clears throat> Welcome to Gratitude. Find your way there. Um, my name is Lynn Provenzano. Many of you have seen me elsewhere in the city on meditations that we're now doing online and clinics that we used to have here in the city and also as the executive director of the OLLI program at UTEP, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. Uh, I've been invited here today to do this brief class with you on gratitude and I'd like to help you find your way into gratitude. Uh, the Rio Grande Cancer Foundation is a wonderful, wonderful part of our community and as a matter of fact the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, OLLI, at UTEP is a collaborator with with the Rio Grande Cancer Foundation and we are moving forward into our spring term uh, working together to bring more to the community at large. So welcome again and let's get started. One of the things that we've learned over time is that gratitude is very powerful but let's talk about how we get there. Let's talk about stress and let's talk about distress. Stress is something that we all experience every day and when we get stressed we have a tendency to lean in a lot of different directions but if we look closely at the definition of stress we will find that it's not only negative but it can also be positive stress is nothing more than a normal response to different reactions in our environment um, little internal perturbances and they can be considered adaptive in nature but distress when we go into this mode is really stress that's at a severe or prolonged level. So there are four different types of stress. We have time stress. I think we've all at some point had to meet a deadline. Even in these times of pandemic lockdowns, we still have some deadlines. We have to pay our bills on time. Uh, we have to return phone calls. We have doctor's appointments. Uh, there's anticipatory stress. What will happen if in that waiting game that we play, okay? And situational stress, when we have uh, different uh, altercations, when conversations, okay? Uh, and then, of course, there's encounter stress, okay? And we have fewer encounter stresses right now because we're not face-to-face. -face. But the reality is, is that we experience all of those stresses. But stress in, a, in and of itself can be beneficial. In terms of how we look at stress, it's a survival mechanism. And so it can actually give us some energy, okay? And it can increase our focus in terms of getting things done. So it can increase our performance in some of our activities. So we can use that in a way to benefit us. Now, let's talk about distress briefly. Distress over time is the accumulation of all of our stressful everyday responses and it affects our body and it affects our mind. Okay? So what it does is it erodes your sense of well-being. Distress. That's very interesting, isn't it? So you have to ask yourself, okay, what ways has stress helped you and what ways have you allowed stress to evolve into distress. Take a minute just to think about this. What ways has stress helped you? And how has your stress evolved into distress? So let's talk, let's talk about this a little bit more. If we think about gratitude, gratitude is very positive. It actually comes from a place of love within ourselves. Gratitude is one of those things that sometimes we just take for granted. Think about this as well. When you were growing up, what was the one thing, the one, the one phrase that we always had to learn? Say please and thank you. The reality is that Please and thank you have a lot of power. It changes the framework from which we look at things, except that when we're trained to say those things, it becomes a social norm. And as a social norm, we have a tendency not to put the intention behind it. So what happens if we put the intention behind it? Well, let's look and see what happens. First of all, as powerful words, 
Masaru Emoto did a study, and many of you might have seen the books, The Power of, the Power of Words, um, The Power of Words in Water. Uh, actually, here's one of his books, The Hidden Messages in Water. Okay? And if you look at the word thank you, and if you look at gratitude, you'll see that when he did his studies, that the crystalline structure of the water that he froze was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But if you look at the word distress, you'll see that distress was also mm, nice, but it was kind of murky. So the difference between the two words was very evident physically in the crystalline structure of the water. But then how does that affect us? Well, let's, let's test it, okay? Put your hands together, okay, shake them, okay? Press the palms of your hands, hold them out. Weigh your hands, okay? Now, look into one of your hands and just say the word, the words, thank you, thank you, thank you. And just let it sit there. Now, go ahead and look at the other hand, okay? And just, Oh, say stress, stress, stress. Give it a minute and just wait. Now, as you're waiting, notice the difference of the feelings in your hands. What is happening in the hand where you said thank you? And what is happening in the hand where you placed stress. Now you may notice that the hand that has thank you, that holds thank you in it, is actually starting to get lighter. And the hand that's holding stress is getting heavier. And as it's getting heavier, you may start to feel a little stress in that hand. It's getting heavier, maybe a little more tingling in your hand, a little pain moving up your arm. All we did was place a word in your hands. Now what happens, okay, when that occurs, is that you're creating a thought form. And the thought form actually has mass to it. Okay, do this, break it up, shake your hands. Okay. Look at one hand and say the word apple. 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 Big, red, juicy, apple. Give it a minute. Now, how does it feel in your hand? Check it. Can you feel something in your hand? The reality is, is that words have power. They also have mass. And when you say a word, it creates a thought form. That thought form has a positive or negative effect on your body. Check that apple. How does it feel? Can you feel something heavier in your hand? Now the apple is just an item, but when you start to place emotional words into your vocabulary, guess what? You create all of these thought forms and they will affect you. So love and gratitude actually are the two most powerful words in any language. And if you look again at this particular, uh, these particular images, these are all the images in different languages that Masori Moto took in his, uh, in his research. Very, very powerful. Okay. Uh, here's another one that I'd just like to share with you, and that's self-love. There you go. Can you be grateful for who you are? Can you be grateful for all of the things in your life? Self-love is beautiful, but when we go again into despair, we discover that we have a little disturbance. And here is the despair again. A little murky. On the other page, we have the word blasphemy, and I'll just hold that up for you as well, so that you can see the, the negative effect of a word that really has negative, a negative influence on us. 
Okay. So words have power. Okay. So my question to you is, is your gratitude a skill or is it a practice? And what is the intention behind your gratitude? Okay, so that said, let's try something. Get a piece of paper and a pencil or pen and take a minute to write down all of the things that you are grateful for. Okay, how did you do? It's interesting when we start writing things down how different things come to our minds. Now what I'd like you to do is take another minute and write down the things that you think you should be grateful for. Okay. So take a look at your list. The things that you wrote down are probably priorities in your life. Things that are upfront in your life. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful uh, for the, uh, my income. I'm grateful for my home. But what about the small things in your life? Let's do a stream of consciousness here. Let's say, I'm in my car and I'm driving. Okay, and I'm grateful that I have a car. I'm grateful that I have an income that can pay for the car. I'm grateful that I can pay for my gasoline and fill the car up. I'm grateful that I can hold the steering wheel. I'm grateful for the road that I'm driving on. I'm grateful for the stop sign that is creating safety in my life. I'm grateful that I have a visor that protects me from the sun. I'm grateful for all the stoplights along the way. I'm grateful for that person that just cut me off because it may have saved my life. I'm grateful that there's no traffic in front of me. I'm grateful that I can sit comfortably in this car. I can go on and on and on. So try it yourself, okay? You don't have to be in your car. You can just be sitting in front of your computer screen as you are now. I'm grateful that I have a computer. I'm grateful that I have the vision to see and watch this particular segment um, of a class. I'm grateful that I have a keyboard and that my fingers work the keyboard. I'm grateful that I have the dust cloth, the dust cloth available to wipe off the keyboard when it gets dirty. Okay. I'm grateful that I can pick up my laptop and charge it when I want to. I'm grateful that I have uh, a place in my home to put my computer. You can just keep going on and on and on, stream of consciousness. I'm grateful for the snack that I'm eating right now. I'm grateful for it, the snack that I can eat while I'm at my computer. Okay, I'm grateful that I have a television. I'm grateful that I can watch the television. I'm grateful that I can watch the television with my family. I'm grateful that I can communicate by phone now. I'm grateful, and you can keep going on and on and on. This is about intention. This is about understanding that everything that we have in front of us is something to be grateful for, even if it's a negative experience. How many times in your life have you made a choice and then second-guessed your choice only to discover that if that particular incident hadn't happened, maybe something else would have been missed. So be grateful even for those little things that we believe are harmful or damaging because the reality is, is that we have a choice. We have a choice to be grateful. We have a choice to understand our total uh, commitment to our environment and our relationship with the environment around us, with the people around us. This is a really interesting time in our lives. We've been forced to look at what we consider to be a new normal, and yet we don't even know what that new normal is. As a matter of fact, I think we're all getting tired of hearing the phrase new normal, because honestly, we don't know where we're going to land. But we do know from moment to moment how grateful we can be 
regarding uh, our responses in our lives. So let's take a look again at your list. Choose one item on your list of priorities and work from there into a little bit of stream of consciousness. Take your pencil and paper, or pen and paper, and begin writing now. Okay, how did you do? It's amazing how you can stretch out your gratitude to cover all of your bases. One of the things that we need to understand about ourselves is that we have a miraculous, wonderful physical body. It's really this fabulous neurological computer that makes everything work. But we also have our emotional and mental selves. When our emotions get in the way, it affects our bodies. When our mental side gets away, it can create brain chatter and literally take us into that insanity of, of what's going to happen next. Okay, which, by the way, stirs up our emotions and starts to create stress, which can evolve into distress unless we find a way to make the choice to be positive and be in a state of gratitude. So find your way to gratitude. Now, if you look at your priorities, you'll discover that your priorities are a combination of a great many things a great many things. The one piece that is underlying gratitude is love. We, you saw the, the beautiful crystal of self-love that Masori Emoto did in his studies. And, and the reality is, is that love conquers all, doesn't it? Self-love is important if we're going to maintain our health and wellness as well. You know, when the plane's going down, they tell you to give oxygen to yourself first. Why? You can't be of service to anyone else unless you are of service to yourself and in good, healthy condition to help someone else. So love is important. You need to give something back to yourself. You can do that by simply tapping your heart center. Your heart center is the center of who you are. The human heart and then of course the divine heart, that part of you that's closest to the universe, closest to your belief systems. Okay. But tap your heart center and activate that beautiful, loving part of yourself. If you think that that part of yourself has shut down, forget it. Make the choice to open it up. Actually, when someone's upset, one of the things that you might do is hug them and pat them on the back, at least when you know we were doing hugs and not elbow and ankle bumps. Okay, But think about it. Do you pat somebody on the back when you hug them when they're in distress? when they're having an emotional moment? And do they calm down and feel better after you've pat them on the back? Well, patting someone on the back is the same as activating their heart center. For you, your choice is to activate here. Tap it here, okay? It automatically softens the mode, or the mood, I should say, automatically softens the mood and the mode that you're in. It sends out waves of love, waves of joy, as opposed to sinking into that negative part of yourself. It's not about just sending that to someone else. It's also about sending it to yourself. And then be grateful that you can do that. Be grateful that you know how to do it. It makes that much of a difference. So find your way to gratitude. Look at every aspect of what you're doing and the, the beauty of every aspect. We may look at something and say it's good, bad, or ugly. There is indifference there. But you don't have to live in indifference. You can live in a healthier state of well-being just by shifting into the practice of gratitude as opposed to the automated please and thank you that we learned when we were children. It makes that much of a difference. So I hope that you found your way to something new, something that can help you during these very, very interesting times. We're learning a lot about ourselves. We're learning a lot about technology. We're learning about our uh, ability to cope, to reconnect in different ways. 
and to know that the relationships we have in our in our lives are very important but if we do all of that with gratitude we'll feel better and we'll ride out the waves of of discord and the waves of chaos and we'll find that we have focus and wellness and a little bit of happiness and joy that we can sprinkle into our day. Thanks for joining me today and I'm grateful to be here and grateful to the Rio Grande Cancer Foundation for inviting me to spend time with you. Be safe, be well, be in gratitude.